Hey guys, my name is Shai and this reading is specifically for Hadarians. Of course, you are more than welcome to watch this. If you are not Hadarian, there could be messages in here for you, but I am very deliberately tuning into the Hadarian frequency because of the kind of experiences that have come through for me over the last couple of days. This is a very timeless reading. This message is for whenever you find your way to this video. Um, but I think it is interesting that I am recording this on the 222-222 portal day, which has been massively, massively transformative for me. And I also feel for many other Hadarians who were also kind of synchronized with this energy in the same way um, that I was. And this is actually my fourth attempt at beginning this video. I feel like I am being like very specifically guided in how I word this and how I approach this almost like threading a needle okay like I feel like I'm trying to figure out how to thread a needle with this message so that's why this card is already out I had shuffled I had shuffled for this and, and I did draw this randomly um but I wanted to leave it out and have another stab at expressing the message here basically. <laughs> so this is this card of healing and I am almost shocked at the art on this card because I haven't seen this card in a while and I was actually drawing swirls and squiggles like this earlier today before I saw this card. Uh, very cool. So healing, right? He healing for Hadarians, healing for Hadarians. And to me this comes down to the releasing of a bottleneck of energies. The releasing of a bottleneck of energies that have been there, that have been bottled up like since the Hadarian diaspora, if we can call it that. I'm going to call it that. Why not, right? <laughs> Since the Hadarian diaspora, we have had these energetic bottlenecks and <sighs> the releasing of this energetic bottleneck has played out for all of you in your in very intimate, very personal ways around the time that you watch this video, okay? So it's all very different. It's all very personal, but there is this overarching theme of releasing this like clog <laughs> it's like like an energetic clog it is a bottleneck it is a bag a ba like a bag of frequencies like i would say baggage but it, it's it's more like a bag of frequencies that you that you have carried around with you since you left hadar right since you left hadar you've been walking around with this bag of frequencies and that bag of frequencies has been transformed, right? It has been transformed. It's This is very scorpionic, like very, very, very scorpionic. Um, when I'm filming this, the moon is actually in Scorpio. And why is this important, right? Why, why are we being called to notice our healing process? Why are, being, why are we being called to notice our healing process? This is about looking to the future, looking to the future, looking to the future by releasing the past and no longer referencing the past, no longer needing to reference the past. I feel that, you know, many of us look to the past and even you don't need to have memories of Hadar, right? You don't need to have memories of Hadar, but you do have energetic memories, even if you don't have visual or very specific memories, right? You have energetic memories of a different world, of a different place, of a different way of being. When did this card come? When did all these cards come out? I had my eyes closed while I was shuffling. I only drew this card, so I guess we're going to go with all of these. Um, you, have, so you still have energetic memories that have been a little bit bogging you down a little bit bogging you down ever since you left Hadar and whatever has been going on in your personal life, whatever you have released energetically, physically, emotionally, it could be something that you did in a dream, in a dream state, right? Um, it's coming into an understanding that you no longer need to be referencing the past. You no longer need to be looking in your bag of frequencies that you've been carrying around since Hadar. It's like you have a suitcase full of stuff from Hadar and you've been carrying it around, perhaps afraid to let it go um, because that would sever your ties to your home, right? Um, but this suitcase that you've been carrying around, this bag of frequencies has prevented you from fully grounding into your life, 
into your human life, into your physical vessel, and into the earth, right? So that's where this bottleneck was. It was like you literally couldn't get fully into your body. Um, like I do private readings, you know, private tarot readings, right? And many of my clients are Hadarians and uh, man, I got to say a very common theme, not for all, not for all, but for maybe 90% of Hadarians I've done private readings for are to some degree like out of their bodies and really disconnected from Gaia. Um, even, even, even though it is common, really common for Hadarians to be in communication with Gaia and to feel her very strongly and to, um, like be connected in with, uh, like the elemental realm, the fairy realm, the fae realm, right? So many of us, like myself included, have been, um, kind of at vibrational odds with Gaia, not fully, uh, not fully melding with her, not fully merging with her, uh, but that's all shifting now, right? That's all shifting now because this suitcase was gone. It's almost like the suitcase of Hadarian frequencies was wedged in your root chakra, preventing your, preventing your earth star chakra from like being almost like pre preventing your energy from what I'm seeing right now. It's like there was this Hadarian frequency wedge stuck in your root chakra that was like preventing you from fully uh, sending your energy down into the earth, like really, really fully, right? Um, it's like, even if you feel, feel so connected with Gaia, right? Um, and, and tuned into nature, there, there's this level of fully merging and melding with Gaia that you have yet to experience, but you're about to experience now. And it's like, in hindsight, you will go, wow. Uh, yeah. Like I thought I was connected before, like how much more am I connected now? And it's going to be so exciting. And so uh, like a couple things to note, I can feel my Hadarian guides, <laughs> like kind of like giggling over in the corner here. And they're saying it is so important for you to know that the releasing of this suitcase of this Hadarian frequency bag that does not mean that you are disconnected or that you have left behind or that you are now unable to connect with your home in Hadar what it actually means is that you're no longer stuck in the past you're no longer stuck in the past you're no longer looking back at the past you're no longer like referencing the past and this is so important because it is paving the way for the future it's now allowing you to look forward to the future of Hadar to one day when you can actually go there like you can astral astral travel there right now and right now um the planet that most of us remember so the you know the beta centauri system which is also known as the hadarian system is three stars um and there's an unknown amount of planets right astronomers don't know how many planets there are there so it's up to us to kind of you know, use our, our gifts and skills to astral travel there and see how many planets. Um, but there is one Earth-like planet that seems to be the one that most of us remember, and you can astral travel there now, and that planet is being healed, right? It is being healed as we speak. Um, but there, but like literally right now with this healing process, we are building the future of what is, what is Hadar going to become in the future? It is being reborn as of right now, right? And everything that you dream, all of the dreams that you dream for Hadar and just for what you would want in your like ideal homeland, right? What you would want with your ideal home all goes into the vortex of creation for building the future of Hadar, right? And uh, so that is why it's like, in releasing the, in releasing this suitcase, whatever it was for you personally, it could have been, have been something very personal for you, whatever it was personally, that's actually going to allow you to actually get what you want. It's like in releasing this old baggage, that's going to allow you to get what you actually want in the future because now you're future focused. You're future focused and you're hooked in, you're going to be hooked into Gaia. Now you're going to be melded, getting your earth star chakra online with Gaia and it's allowing you to create the future, create the future, create the future. And now I understand why I had so many false starts in starting this reading because the other three times I tried to start it, I was having a big long like a much longer speech about things that happened to me yesterday things that happened to me today and all of these past experiences and it just kept not feeling right and one time the camera even freaked out so that is the big focus here it's like this is like a demarcation line like a line in the sand has been drawn like <laughs> for those of us who experienced this on the 222 222 portal it's like bam that day, two, 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 two. <laughs> everything before the two, two portal is the past, and everything as of now is 
like moving into the future of creating, 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 creating new futures, right? And for everybody seeing this at different times, it's like you you know when the line, where your line in the sand is, right? You know where your demarcation line is. You just had like a past future, right? And now it's all about ushering in the future. It's about dreaming the future, about flowing into the future and just allowing it to be born from your vision, be born from your dreams, be born from your ideas. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> guys, can you even? <laughs> New beginnings. Oh my God, look at this beautiful <sighs> landscape, this beautiful sunrise and the galaxy above. <sighs> I don't, I don't even need to say anything about that. <laughs> that card comes out perfectly to confirm what I was just saying. Oh my God, guys change this is the first time i've seen this card and look at this hot air balloon rising above rising above rising above into the clouds and this really um nudges me to talk about something i was just remembering so like i said there's an unknown amount of planets in the hadarian triple star system um i am aware from my own you know kind of investigations of three planets, right? The one Earth-like planet that has, you know, mountains and dirt and lakes and, and rivers and all of that. It, that seems to be the one most of us remember, which is not surprising since it's easier to remember Earth-like planets, right? And I do think that that planet was the kind of the hub of Hadarian civilization. Um, but I am also have received glimpses of two other planets. One of them is kind of like a like a volcano planet. It's just lava and magma. I don't know. I don't know anything about that planet. But this third planet is, it's like a gas giant, but it it's like you could put a hot air balloon in it. it it's like a gas giant, but not like, you know, we think gas giants, we're thinking Jupiter and Saturn, right? Which are, um, you know, like all red and hot and stormy and all that. This gas giant, it almost looks like Earth's atmosphere. Uh, you know, it's like blue skies and it's like white clouds. And there's even like, massive tornadoes like flying around in the sky it's like a huge massive massive sky because like imagine the sky of a gas giant is like d d inconceivably enormous compared to earth right it's like how many earths could you fit <laughs> into one of these gas giants um so it's like the entire ecosystem of this gas giant like took place in the atmosphere but there was life in the atmosphere like life that never touched the ground because of course you can't go all the way down to the ground of, of a gas giant, right? You'd be crushed, at least, you know, humans would be crushed, right? There's, the pressure is so intense. So it's like there's this band of sky up in the atmosphere of this gas giant. And it I could see, you know, like beings and balloons and stuff floating around <laughs> um, exactly like this, right? Exactly like this. But here you are rising higher, rising above, rising above it all, rising into the change of the future, right? Everything has been changed. Everything has been changed. And I am a, lo a little bit losing track of what I have said in this video versus what I said in my previous false starts. So I don't know if I mentioned that for me, this whole thing of releasing this baggage and going through this transformation process, it, it feels like a systems upgrade, like literally like when you, you know, upgrade the operating system on your computer, like when you upgrade Windows or Mac OS or get an update on your phone, it's like a an entirely new systems upgrade and it's about efficiency. It's about efficiency. It's about no longer having to reference the past so that you can look at the future and just having so many unnecessary things drop away. So many unnecessary things just drop away so that you can focus on the business of creation, like focus on the business of creation. Um, and in, in this new, in this new beginning, in this new reality of your life that you're stepping into, all of us are stepping into kind of synchronously together, but this is, it feels very personal to me. And I think that's important because, uh, that, that is like the contrast we came to earth to experience. Like one of, one of the reasons we came to earth, there are many different reasons why we are here on earth. Um, but one of the reasons is to experience individuation and to experience individuality. Um, to earlier today, I was really, um, starting to understand the flow of history um, on the Hadarian Earth-like world, right? I wish I had a name for it, but, you know, maybe we'll just call it like Hadar Prime <laughs> like, or something, right? Planet number one. It's planet number one. It's the Earth-like planet. You know, in the beginning, everything was, it was, there was just, you know, Earth and water and sky and fire, right? There was just the elements and 
like consciousness was entirely blended together. Um, but as the time went on, you know, beings with shapes evolved and we could shape shift um, and everything was so fluid and we were all tuned in but all the way up until the end when there became more what you know humans would call civilization with great big buildings and um and like a government structure and temples and stuff like that um and we had become more and we had become increasingly individ individuated on 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 hadar and um we liked it right we liked it but even at, in our most individuated state on hadar we were still always constantly telepathically all linked like all sharing thoughts and feelings all the time right um so that is what makes life on earth difficult because we really keenly feel the separation but <sighs> this is like no longer feeling the pain of that right no longer feeling the pain of isolation no longer feeling the feeling the pain of separation and instead understanding that it is just about individuation and that it is just about solitude which is beautiful and peaceful and healing and relaxing and solitude is such a refuge right such a beautiful refuge and solitude is the place where you go to be transformed right you go into the hermit cave in order to transform yourself solitude is peaceful blissful healing and transformative um and it is also this is like when we are all developing our power to be individual creators um, as opposed to the Hadarian way where everything was always like a collective effort. And so on earth, you maybe you have often felt that you need to constantly be working with others and always wanting to reference other people and do like always get a group going in order to do things. This is like really stepping into your power. Um, it's like transcending the idea of being a co-creator and just becoming a creator, a creator, a sovereign creator in your own right. And really owning that individuation and owning the fact that as an individual creator being then you can create exactly what you desire like exactly exactly and you have the power to do it this is like a big power up a massive leveling up in your consciousness right um it doesn't mean that you can't co-create and interact and intertwine and be interconnected with others it's none of that it's knowing that you can have both <laughs> knowing that you can have both and that you can fully experience um individuation right that you can fully experience individuation <sighs> what's this last card gonna be <laughs> courage yeah so for some of us more than others it's going to take more levels uh like more drumming up of courage in order to fully own this new experience of being a individuated creator being right an individuated creator being um The more, the more you t are tuned into fire energy, the easier it will be for you to find this courage, right? Um, you know, if you happen to be like a water sign um, with like a, with your north node in a fire sign, then that is like, you are learning about this. You are learning to ignite the fire from within. You are learning to ignite your courage. Um, so that this plays out differently for everybody, right? Some people, I feel like this is something that you're just stepping into now, just getting used to the idea of finding your courage, just getting used to the idea of stepping out of your comfort zone. And for others of us, it's like, yes, like, yes, I am ready for this. I am ready for this. And surrendering to the, how do I want to put this? like surrendering to the flames is what I just heard actually surrendering to the flames but knowing that the flames will not burn you knowing that the flames will not burn you because if you are burning as hot as the flames then the flames cannot touch you right the flames cannot touch you if you are burning hotter than the flames it's like if you are burning brighter if you are burning so bright if you were the brightest light in your reality then nothing else can touch you nothing else could even look at you right you are the brightest light <sighs> And you create from the emanations of your light. You create from the emanations of your light. Uh, and this is, oh my God, this is why it is so important that we are here learning about individuation because it is through your process of individuation 
even if you're if your individuation process has come through experiences of extreme isolation that was just the journey you took to get here <laughs> and you are leaving the pain and fear of that in the past and it was so important for you to learn this process of individuation so that you could more effectively create an exponentially brighter, more diverse, more varied, more complex, more beautiful, more vivid, more vibrant dream of Hadar's future, right? Because from what I saw, what I was able to glimpse of, you know, the Hadarian history, the way things evolved, there it what there wasn't actually a lot of change, right? If we're talking to me, the planet feels like indescribably like ancient, like so ancient, like eons and eons of Earth time would have passed. And even though there was this slow progression from like being extremely, extremely, extremely collective and having, you know, basically nothing, no nothing on the planet but the elements, right, to this um, time at the near the end when there was civilization, it had been so slow and had been so, such a long, slow process. There wasn't really a ton of change. Um, the, the change that mostly that I mo mostly have seen on Hadar involved shape shifting, right? People were able to just naturally because they they weren't. Um, I don't feel that at least for the most of our span of time that we weren't entirely physical the way our human body is. We weren't like these like fleshy carbon based bodies. We had it was more like living in a dense densitized <laughs> like a densitized light body, right? Um, and you, so you could just shift your shape, you know, you, you could be, you could be an eagle, you could be a fish, <laughs> you could be a dragon, you could be whatever you wanted and you could just change. So it's like we could change our shapes very easily. Like it's almost like we were like, like chameleons, right? We could shift our shapes. Um, at least many of us could. The degree to which we could shape shift was, would vary, right? Um, and especially depending on the time and just what your interests were and who you had been in the beginning of the planet, right? But you could ship, you could shift your shape, you could shift your shape, but like kind of um, the planet itself didn't really have a radical amount of evolution, right? Especially compared to Earth where there is like just constant, constant change and evolution all the time. And part of that was because of because there wasn't a ton of individuation, right? Because there wasn't a ton of individuation that meant that there wasn't um, that like individual creative spark, everything kind of happened by consensus and everything kind of had to happen all at once. And it makes change a little unwieldy, right? If you have like an entire planetary collective that is constantly sharing thoughts and feelings and vibes, it's like we had to get everyone to agree, <laughs> like vibrationally agree, right? Vibrationally agree in order to make a shift. So that's why it happens so slowly. So coming to earth and learning the process of individuation um, and to really, the, the there is like interest and value in just simply individuating for yourself, right? For your own soul's journey. So there's absolutely that, like that is also just literally your soul just wanted to look, to, wanted to learn to individuate even further, right? But in terms of how this plays into Hadar, it's like the more individuated you become and the more you own your power as an individual creator, not, not just a co-creator, but an individual creator in your own right, that then when we we are literally right now in our in our dreams and like in our waking dreams right in our daydreams in our thoughts in our hopes and in our vibrations we are like making the blueprints we are creating the vibrational future that will eventually manifest into reality for the future of hadar for when it like has its reblossoming right the reblossoming of hadar and <laughs> so <laughs> if if that helps you if that helps you right maybe that helps you if you go why has this all been so difficult what has it all been for right why have i been isolated why have i been forced to, into situations that stretch me out of my comfort zone why have there why has there been this new beginning and this change and this forcing me to build up my courage it is one of the reasons right there are many reasons for that you have your own personal individual reasons for that but in terms of the hadarian collective which you are a part of it is to literally create a infinitely more vibrant diverse beautiful, fantastic, amazing, mind-blowingly unbelievable future for Hadar. The future Hadar is going to be, is going to be, period.
mindset, con conscious and unconscious awareness. <sighs> this is amazing. This is from the Activating Abundance deck, by the way. This signals a new level of harmony in between your, your conscious mind and your subconscious levels, right? Conscious and unconscious awareness and see here how they're connected as this cube. How do, how do I articulate this? Okay, I'm having a little bit of a pause on this one because this is this bringing me back to the message I was trying to speak when my camera flipped out and started buzzing in a way I'd never seen it do before. And I feel this um, like very strange kind of fuzzy resistance coming from when I try to approach this topic, but I really feel guided to delve into it. I'm not sure where the resistance is coming from. So maybe I need to change my approach on how I discuss this. So this comes down to reevaluating the way you have used your emotional guidance system, your emotional guidance system, your emotions being one facet of your inner guidance system, your inner compass, the way the universe and your soul is always guiding you. <sighs> okay, so far so good. That feels good. <laughs> I think I will use myself as an example. I know for most of my life, I was very like addicted <laughs> to my negative thoughts and my negative emotions to the point where the first 30 years of my life, I was essentially entirely consumed by mental illness and just, you know, all of those negative thoughts and feelings that we don't want, right? And It took a lot, it took so much, it took so much fight, so much struggle, like just in my own consciousness, in my own mind, in order to pull myself out of that. Like it, it took 30 years of fighting and struggling to get myself into a place where I could um, care about how I felt. Like it, it was like, before I turned 30, I could only ever focus on bad things, things that made me feel bad. That was, that's the thing. I could only ever focus on things that made me feel bad. And I would constantly be spiraling, spiraling, spiraling in this horrible storm of negative thoughts and emotions. Right. And it was like, cause I kept referencing my reality and I would go, I see something I don't like in the world. And then I would go, therefore I must feel bad about it. I, I felt like, like, like the, like the stuff I saw in my reality was forcing me to feel bad. Like, it, like I had to feel bad. I was like, if it's if that thing I don't like is there, and if it is a bad thing, if it's something I'm gonna judge as bad, then I'd sit, then I'd be like, then I have to feel bad. Therefore, I have to feel bad. There was this connection, right? There was this connection between what I saw and how I felt. And I had to get into this place where I had to prioritize how I felt over everything else everything else. I had to prioritize my emotions out of everything. And I started practicing. I was like, okay, if that makes me feel bad, I'm going to stop doing it. <laughs> if reading that thing makes me feel bad, I'm going to stop doing it. If talking to that person makes me feel bad, I'm going to stop doing it. And it was like this huge pulling back of my energy from everything that made me feel bad. And slowly that gave me the energetic space I needed in order to start aligning to things that made me feel good, right? Starting to align me to things I, that made me feel good. And then I would start focusing on something that made me feel good, focusing on something that made me feel good. And then it took years of like doing this, <laughs> but I finally get to where I am now, where I am in like 
you know, <laughs> good days almost all the time. Every once in a while I am derailed and have, you know, an emotional event, but it is always like an emotional event that serves a purpose. It is always like to purge and release something. It is always like, I can always make sense of it and it only never lasts a few hours, like a day or two at most, right? At most. I know, I never, I never fall into these months and months of depression like I used to. Never, ever, ever again. And I'm telling this whole story because I think this is the way I'm being guided to share this message. It is about like, prioritize how you feel above everything else. It's like care enough about yourself to care how you feel. Care enough about yourself to care how you feel. Um, maybe often in your life you have cared about how others felt, right? And now I'm getting that like, don't talk about that like weird vibe again, right? I'm getting this like, <laughs> I've never really felt this before. I don't know where this is coming from. It's this strange like fuzzy anxiety type of feeling that's kind of coming at me. So I think I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go there, right? That's, that's literally what I'm doing right now. It's like, I have this feeling of don't like, I don't like that feeling. There's a feeling coming at me that I don't like. So I'm gonna take my attention away from that and focus on what I do like. So what feels good? What feels good talking about the, this message coming from this card is just this message of, care enough about yourself to focus on what makes you feel good care enough about yourself to make to make sure you're focusing on what makes you feel good and that is something that brings you into alignment that aligns you with your source that aligns you with your soul that aligns you with most high with god with goddess with your hadarian guides like literally with anybody you want to tune into right who is in pure positive energy care about things that make you feel good care enough about yourself to put yourself into good feelings right focus on that focus on that focus on that like focus on that that is what brings you into alignment and that is um that is this message here about using your emotional guidance system by by focusing on what makes you feel good prioritize what makes you feel good and it boils down to loving yourself enough to focus on what makes you feel good right okay i'm gonna leave that and get one of these heart shaped cards, which I will endeavor, <laughs> endeavor to shuffle. I think it really takes practice to allow things to drop out of your vibration. It takes practice to allow things to drop out of your vibration. So if you have things in your vibration, thoughts, feelings and you know that they are unwanted thoughts and feelings it's okay that you can't drop them immediately right it can take practice it can take practice and it more to the point it just takes time of repeatedly taking your attention off them and putting your attention on the things that you do love the things that you do love the things that do make you feel good the things that do make you feel good what makes you feel good love yourself enough to focus on what makes you feel good and if you, I have my eyes closed, by the way, so I'm shuffling. I'm that was a random pick. <laughs> um, if you do, <sighs> find that the vibrations that you don't want are still kind of hanging around. Think of them as like a scar healing over, like scar tissue fading, right? Um, so vibrations that you don't want, you can let them fade like scar tissue. You have a scar. It's there and you just kind of, you put some cream on it and then you forget about it and you just keep ignoring it. And then a year later you look and go, wow, that scar is really faded, right? That scar has really faded. So the feelings that you don't want, the thoughts that you don't want, all of the thoughts and feelings that don't make you feel good, allow them to fade exactly like you would allow scar tissue to fade. And so let's look at this. This beautiful being, we have a tree, the heart. I don't know what the message on the back is. Give thanks for the blessings of love soon to come your way. Know that you deserve to be and have all that your heart truly desires. Oh my God. So be thankful, be grateful for the love that is coming your way. Be grateful for the love that is on the horizon, right? Just because you don't see it right now doesn't mean it isn't there. Focus on the love that you know you are going to receive in the future. It is, it's literally, it's coming your way. It is coming your way. It is yours. It is out there. It is out there in your vortex. 
and be grateful for it now, right? Be grateful for it now. You don't need to wait for the love to get here in order to be grateful for it. You can be grateful for the love now and that will allow it to synchronize with you faster, right? Practice gratitude for what you know is in your future. <laughs> and then that will help you work the law of vibration to bring it in for you sooner rather than later. And again, I got my eyes closed. I have not seen this card before. We have two beings here, nude. To me, this looks like a forest at night. <laughs> Wait, don't rush into it. Allow nature to take its course. Okay, so this is a message for uh, somebody who... <laughs> is single and is looking for love <laughs> right don't rush it don't rush it don't rush it just be grateful for the love that is coming um and allow it to get here exactly when it gets here right don't rush it allow nature to take its course um but just focus on how worthy you are to receive love right you are so so worthy to receive love Know that you deserve to be and have all that your heart truly desires. You deserve to receive love and just feel into the love that is out there, that is already yours. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Um, but, but don't rush things, right? Don't rush things. That's like, um, you know, for any anybody who is like dating and going like, is this my one? Is this my one? Is this my one? It's like, just, just ch chill out and... <laughs> and allow it to unfold as it will. I think one more of these. You are creating the love that is going to manifest in your future, right? You are creating the love that is manifesting in your future. Um, It's like we had all these messages about you going through a solitary experience in order to receive healing, right? And in order to individuate more fully. And But also, as you are standing here as a fully empowered creator being, by remembering that you are worthy of love, that you deserve to be loved, and that there is love out there for you, perfectly coming towards you. It, it is on the horizon. Practice feeling the love that is already out there for you. Practice gratitude for it, and then wait. <laughs> wait, like, it's like, a, perfectly allow it to unfold. Don't try to, like, you know, meddle with the divine timing of things, right? Don't rush into it, don't rush into it, because, trying this is like using your vibration using your vibration to work the law of attraction right um action is much less important than than we have been led to believe it is right your the love that is meant for you will come to you through your vibrational work through your energy work it's not going to come to you through action through you know running around and <laughs> like seeking seeking love on a human level that's not how your vibration is going to align with love your vibration will align with love by literally just vibrating with love and vibrating with gratitude for love and grat vibrating with your worthiness to receive love and this is this last card playfulness Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together and remember, love is the greatest healer. That's going to be the last card because how perfect is that? The first card out was healing and the last word out is healing. This is a great big circle of healing, <laughs> beginning and ending in playfulness, in playfulness and in joy. And enjoy. <sighs> I don't remember if I said this at the beginning of the reading. So if I did, I do apologize for repeating myself. <laughs> but I wanted to give a shout out to my beautiful friend Maureen, who is a Hadarian healer. And I'm specifically thanking her for this reading because uh, I was connecting with her over the last couple of days. And that is what 
her energy and the activations I received from her was what allowed me to do this reading. It was inspired me to do it. And I am gonna link to her website down in the description box because she is a very powerful healer and I highly recommend her to anyone, especially Hadarians, right, who want to receive healing because it is so powerful to, for a Hadarian to receive healing from another Hadarian, but she's amazing and I would recommend her to anyone. I have had like very, very life-changing uh, sessions with her that like really significantly shifted my vibration and my light body and it was amazing. So I just wanted to thank her for that and link, I'll link to her website down below so you guys can check her out if you feel so called. So I love you guys. I'm so excited to create the future Hadarian star system with all of you. It is an honor to vibrate here with you. I love you guys. Bye.